Well, hello, happy Thursday, Maverick Traders. This is Rob Reinhold. It is May 30th, and we had a little bit of a soft day today. We're going to take a look at what happened today, some of the news that affected it. We had a big earnings report out of Salesforce it missed. We're going to take a look at our technicals and say, did we get a score change today? And yes, we did. We did get a little bit of a score change. And I've got three setups for you, and they are all bullish setups. I know that might be a surprise with the day we had today, but let's jump into it. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80 percent of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. All right, we take a look at the numbers here. The numbers look bad. So let's start off with what happened was that we got Salesforce earnings before the bell and they were weak. A couple other earnings were weaker than expected. Things like Costco were stronger than expected, but we started the day weak. We overnight, we were down a half a percent in the futures. And then the Salesforce news just kept it weak. And pretty much for the first part of the day, we just went between, you know, down half a percent to down 0.2%. And then we got some softness at the very end of the day. And we broke below our support level at 62 or 52.60 on the S&P. And we came all the way down to the 20 day moving average. If we take a look at the numbers here, okay, it was a down day, but I really want to show you something. There's definitely some strength in there. Look at the Russell, the Russell, up 1% on the day, and at one point, it was up to 1.5% for the day. The Russell never went down today. It just kept going up and up and up, peaked at 1.5%, backed off a little bit. Very, very strong. I wanna show you underneath the hood of this market because the advanced decline line, six out of 10 stocks went up today. That was something that I just couldn't shake today as I was looking at this market softening and I'm thinking, okay, what's going on? We have 50% of stocks above the 50-day moving average, 50% below. Think about what we wanna see when we see a pullback. When the market's just made a new high and we know there's gonna be a pullback, usually we pull back because there was too much optimism. So we wanna pull back to a point where there's not, no longer too much optimism. And you can see we've basically done that. Now this is the hardest part about pullbacks is they feel ugly, they feel nasty, and they don't make you feel bullish. That's why they're pullbacks, is that they basically put all these numbers to where, oh my gosh, what's going on? I really wanna point you to this heat map, and I wanna take a look at this heat map first before we even take a look at the S&P 500. Take a look at where we see the intense red. Large cap tech. If you were to take these out, if you were to take all these areas out, it was a massive, massive green day today. Now look, I am not trying to sugarcoat it because in the end, you must trade off the charts. And so let's take a look at the S&P, but look, I'm not gonna be sugarcoating this because this was a down day. It was an ugly day. We broke through that support level at 5260 and I said on the weekend, hey, if we break below this level, the first test is the 20 period moving average. And you can see we got a little bounce at the end of the day that kind of saved it. It's not broken below the 20 day moving average, but it definitely looks like it wants to. And I said, if it breaks below the 20, we're gonna head our way down to the 50, where that is the line in the sand of whether this is still a bull market or not. Tomorrow, we've got the PCE price index. If it's good, I fully expect that we are going to get a nice bounce to the upside off of these levels. If it's bad, I fully expect we're gonna trade down to that 50, 50 period moving average. But if we take a look at this, the only thing we can say is the market's no longer plus three, it's a plus two. And that's what happens when these markets go up, they hit plus threes, and then when they pull back, they go to plus two, plus one, and sometimes they bounce and go back to a plus two, plus three, and sometimes they fall to a zero and they go negative. Just like we saw back in April. 
We saw this back in April when it broke down below. We said, okay, we got to be bearish. And I said, don't expect it to be bearish for too long because the economy is still good. It was definitely shorter than I thought it was going to be. We spent maybe 15 days below the moving average before we popped back up and made new highs. Now, this is the S&P. Let's come over here and take a look at the NASDAQ. And we can see the NASDAQ still looks great. It still looks fantastic. And if you take a look at where we were just a couple of weeks ago, okay, we've basically based up in this level. We're still above the breakout point and we're still solidly above the 20 day moving average. So the NASDAQ still looks good. However, again, this was an ugly day, an ugly candle, and we can't discount it. But when we look at the whole picture, we say, okay, do we still think this bull market is going to go higher? And I use the wrong word. Do we think? Your and my opinion is probably based on the positions we have right now in our account. It's probably based on our uh, political affiliation. It's probably based on how much money we have in the bank. It's based on so many things. We can't just think. We have to look at charts. And the charts are still bullish. This is still nothing more than a pullback. It could get worse, but at this point, it is nothing more than a pullback and pullbacks and bull markets should be bought. So we are going to downgrade this market from a plus three to a plus two. If we have a negative day tomorrow, so let's say that PCE price index comes out negative and we fall tomorrow, we're going to be downgrading this market to a plus one or a zero based on where it ends the day. If we get a green candle, we get a bounce higher tomorrow, then we could potentially go back to a plus three in the trading room over the weekend. So as you can see here, it, it's not perfectly clean here. Tomorrow's candle is gonna tell us a lot of our trades going forward. Do we wanna put the gas back on or do we wanna pull back a little bit more and get a little bit more defensive? Let's take a look at some potential trades. And like I said earlier, I've got three bullish trades here and I'm gonna to explain to you why. There are some good neutral setups. There are some good bear setups, but holy cow, there are some great bullish setups. I ran out of room. I mean, I could have gone on forever. And this is, this is another thing I use to gauge my market outlook. If I'm out there looking for setups and I'm finding just, just tons and tons of bearish setups. So let's say that I'm bullish and the bullish setups don't look too good and I'm just finding tons and tons of bearish setups. That's a sign that, okay, maybe I might be a little bit wrong on my market outlook, or maybe that it isn't going to bounce this time. But when I, when I take a look at it, I say, okay, we're now at a plus two, and I think we're likely to have a bounce, and I go out there and I see so many great bullish setups, it's a confirmation that this is still just a pullback. So let's go ahead and take a look at three potential bullish trades. All right, here is ENVX. I have never traded this before. It is in the, I forgot, I gotta look it up real quick. It is an industrial stock. So this is an industrial stock. And take a look at this stock chart. This stock chart just looks great. We had a big gap up from earnings. We peaked out at 1050 and we got this ascending triangle pattern. And take a look, we are breaking out today. Today was a down day and this stock is up 8%. Look, this thing's a mover. It was $6 a couple of weeks ago, and uh, now it's 12. So it's already doubled, but this is where the money's going. This stock has weekly options. This stock has 50 cent strike prices. So there's unlimited ability for you to figure out some sort of spread. You could do an 11, 11.50. You could do a 11.12. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that you could do on this. But I think 12 is a decent target here. I think 12 is a reasonable target for the next couple of weeks on ENVX. Another great looking bullish setup. And this is across the board in solar stocks. Ever since the tariffs were put on the solar makers out of China, these things have perked up. They have gotten killed. If you take a look at um, all the solar stocks, they've had a brutal last six to eight months. They are bouncing and they are bouncing hard. And this is just a beautiful candle, just a beautiful candle today. We broke out, failed, gap down, 
ran up, and now today is definitely some confirmation that the bulls are back in charge. Look, the stock was up 8% today. It could absolutely have more. This thing's a big mover. It was at $10 just a couple weeks ago. Now it's at 14. This thing moves 30, 40%. So I think you can take a look up to 15 as a short-term target. I like it 14, 15 spread. You're gonna probably pay around 50, 55 cents. So it's about 50, 50, one to one. If you wanna get a little bit more aggressive than that, uh, go with the uh, 14, 16. 14, 16, that's gonna give you some good upside on Sunrun. If you don't like Sunrun, go ahead and take a look at some of the other solar stocks. They all look great. First Solar looks fantastic as well. And last is CCJ. This is in the materials sector. They are a uranium miner. And just a beautiful chart. Just a beautiful chart here. We've got a nice trend line to the upside. We broke out. It didn't quite have the gas to go. Pull back a little bit. Came back up again, and now we've held above that breakout of 53 for three days. In these three days, the market hasn't been all that great. It's telling you the buyers are coming in. I see uh, all the way up to 57 on this one. So for me, a 54, 57, that's going to give me probably about a two to one risk reward on a vertical spread. This thing looks good. So let's talk about tomorrow. The markets are right at support. An uh, update, I'm telling you, an update tomorrow, I think the party's back on. A down day tomorrow, you know, 50-day moving average test is probably next and possibly a break below that. We'll have to wait and see. But look, I've been trading for a long time, and I have fought many trends over the years, and I've learned to stop fighting trends. Every time I've tried to figure out myself if a trend is over, I always think it's over before it actually is. Every now and then I might get it right, but for the most part, and look and challenge yourself too. Just think of how many times you've thought, oh, this thing can't go any higher, and then it goes higher. You've, you've done that to yourself so many times. Stop determining by yourself when the trend is over and just literally wait until the trend is over. Yes, you're going to get hit a little bit on those trend changes. That's just what happens. But you're going to make so much money in the trending phases of the market. It's going to be fantastic. Tomorrow, core PCE price index is supposed to come in at 0.3%. We'll see what it comes in at. If it comes in good, I think you're going to see a market that's already up 1% by the time the market opens. I think it's going to be that powerful. We could get a little fading. Anytime you gap up a percent, you could fade. But if we fade and we hold, or if we don't fade at all, I think Friday could be one of those up days where it just is up all day long. And I think we close up, you know, one, one and a half, maybe even, I don't want to say 2%. We're not in that kind of crazy kind of market at the moment. But I think it could be a good up day. If it's hotter than expected, okay, you know what? We got to reevaluate. We're going to be a little soggy. We're probably headed down a little bit lower to make that ultimate test for the 50-day moving average. So join me for the trading room tomorrow. I'll put that together after the market closes, and we'll have a good update on next week's trades. Goodbye, everybody.